84 degrees here in the River Cities. Thanks for tuning in to the Mac Morning Show. I'm Chris Streets. Glad to have you here. And uh, we are joined in the studio this morning by Aaron Cole from the Clinton Regional Development Corporation. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Chris. How are you today? I am doing very well. We were just talking about me going to Des Moines yesterday. I had some meetings with the governor with the Iowa Association of Business and Industry, ABI. So that was exciting stuff back in Clinton today. Yeah. Now, um, we got to say hi to the governor. Um, anything, did you get to like slide in, hey, Clinton, I was very important to the... <laughs> To the state well, of Iowa? She knows that, luckily. She's been here a number of times right. in the last few years. But no, this is very much focused on uh, the legislature and the legis legislative session and what's going on, some of the key manufacturing-related, workforce-related, child care-related issues. That was a key focus. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, introduce your guest. Who'd you bring? To I'm excited about our guest today. <laughs> so we are with Daniel Meyer, and he is the president of Spiber America, LLC. And we've talked a lot about him, which is why right. we're super thrilled that he's actually here to talk about himself and Spiber today. So um, he just in the United States towards the end of December, yeah. so recently. Yeah. And um, but you were here in Clinton for a site visit back in February of 2020, before the world changed completely. Right. Right. <laughs> And luckily, because of that, uh, because they were here, Spybury was here in February of last year. That obviously helped their timeline so that the project was able to move forward. And we were able to announce it this past November 2020, yeah. that type of thing. And then Daniel arrived in late December and has been here you know, ever since, sort yeah. of getting things up and running. So we're thrilled to have you. Thanks, thank you so much for agreeing to meet with us today. Thank you. And yeah. Again, it's it's all yours. Yeah. So. When, when, we, when we say we talk about you, it's not the bad. We've been very excited to... Uh, to announce um, Spiber uh, coming to Clinton. And uh, first, a little background on you. You are not uh, necessarily the stereotypical uh, CEO that we expect to see when, uh -huh. when a business comes to town. You're <laughs> yeah. a relatively young man. And uh -huh. uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and, and how did you get into this? Yeah, so originally, um, I was born in California. Uh, and then I think when I was about seven, uh, for my dad's work, we moved up to Oregon. I was there through high school. Um, kind of in the Portland area. And then for university, I went up to Seattle. So I've kind of lived all along the West Coast. Um, and then after I graduated university, um, I had actually studied abroad in Japan uh, when, I was, uh, when I was in university. And I decided to go back to Japan on a government exchange program after I graduated. And I was there doing that for about five years. Um, and you can't decide, you can't choose where you're going to uh, be sent in Japan on this program. So they sent me, of course, you know, to this really rural area in northern Japan, middle of nowhere. Um, and uh, I was thinking, okay, when am I going to get back to, you know, a city where there's some actual, you know, <laughs> civilization uh, jobs uh, available for me? <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, it was in my fifth year there that I found out that there was actually a uh, University biotech campus, um, which was there just in the middle of these rice fields. And they were big on entrepreneurship, and there were these startups that were getting cranked out of this, uh, this campus, one of them being Spiber. Um, and so it was in 2015 or so that I joined Spiber. So I I've, I've was in Japan for more than 10 years, about 11 years, and I, was, I worked at Spiber for about six years. Um, so it's been a long time since I've been back in the States and, you know, it finally has come to pass that, uh, we have this, uh, really exciting project here and, yeah. uh, it's been a great opportunity for me to uh, finally come back and, uh, and I'm, I'm really excited to be leading the project here. Uh, it's, that's fantastic. Now, uh, Spiber, what, yeah. what do you guys, it's, it's such an amazing concept. I pulled up uh, websites when they announced you were coming, and I tried to figure out what you guys do. Um, and, and I'll tell you, you work in radio and you're not very smart, and you don't have to do university, so that's why I'm here. But uh, tell us what Spiber does and, uh, and how, how it changes the world. Great. Thank you for that, <laughs> that, that great question. Um, so before I talk about what we do, I think I need to – we should talk a little bit about proteins. So when you talk about uh, proteins – Usually you think of food, right? Right, right. But uh, in actuality, um, proteins are one of the fundamental structural building blocks that life on Earth here uses to make its materials. So if sure. you just think about the human body, 
our skin, our muscles, our hair, our fingernails, these are all materials that make use of proteins. And uh, proteins, what proteins are is they are amino acids linked together in a long chain, and the order of those amino acids in that chain determines whether that protein is going to be a human hair or whether it's going to be a protein found in soft cashmere or wool or even uh, the silk in a spider web, for example. And some of these protein materials have really amazing properties that we haven't been able to duplicate in man-made materials yet. You know, spider silk is one prime example of that. Some spider silks are measured to be like 340 times tougher than uh, high tensile strength steel or even multiple times tougher than uh, Kevlar, which is a fiber used specifically for its toughness in right. bulletproof vests, as you might be aware. And um, not to mention, you know, proteins are fundamentally biodegradable. So a lot of these, you know, nylon, polyester uh, materials that we are mass producing now, you know, over 60% of all fibers are coming from petroleum, basically, that sure. we're processing into these fibers. Um, but proteins, on the other hand, you know, fundamentally biodegradable, right? Um, as well as those amazing properties. So it'd be great if we could use some of these protein materials for uh, a lot of these industrial material applications. But the problem is there's not, for a lot of them, there's really no way to efficiently produce a lot of them at, at a low cost. You know, you're not going to bring a million spiders into one room. I mean, for one thing, they're cannibalistic. They're going to eat each other. Right. But even if you could, you know, painstakingly reeling out the silk and onto these little reels, you know, that's just not feasible, right? <laughs> that would be entertaining to watch. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Entertaining, but not, uh, not, not a business, feasible. right? <laughs> um, so what we do as Fiverr is we take, you know, biotechnology tools, um, and I'll talk a little bit more specifically about that later, to uh, scale up production of some of these really exciting protein materials and uh, using them in a lot of different applications. And um, our primary, uh, y there's so many proteins we could potentially produce, and there's so many types of materials we could make with them, you know, fibers, films, foams, whatever. But we're still, you know, we've been at this for about 13, 14 years, but we're still kind of just getting started. You know, right. we can't do everything. So. Right now we're focused on primarily spider silk proteins because of their amazing potential for that high toughness. And we're primarily focused on making those into fibers, right? Um, and some of our partners are uh, in the automotive industry. We're partnered with several Toyota group companies to make these spider silk fibers for fiber reinforced plastics, um, for uh, auto body parts, structural body parts to uh, reduce the amount of steel that we would need to use in a car and, and make cars lighter. Uh, we're partnering with Bridgestone to make uh, thinner, um, more cushy polyurethane foams for, uh, you know, car seats, for example. Um, we're partnering with the North Face in Japan to have uh, protein textiles for jackets and sweaters and t-shirts, um, and also medical applications as well is another uh, big area where we're focused on. So this, this isn't just like one uh, thing you guys aren't going to be making uh, T-shirts and they're just going to come out on an assembly line. You guys have got some serious things that are that are going to be uh, shared through your technology. Exactly, exactly. So the the way that we do that, or, or the way that we will do that here in Clinton, I think is is probably a, a better angle to focus on is um, that we. The, the first thing that we need to do is we need to find, of course, okay, what protein is do, do we want to make? Right. And then we look at the uh, blueprint for that DNA, which is a, or the blueprint for the protein, which is essentially DNA, right? Um, in a spider, in a spider's um, silk gland, the, the cells in that gland have some DNA in them that tells them, okay, this is the kind of protein you need to produce. Hmm. So we find the, that DNA that, that is kind of the code for the protein and we actually, in our lab in Japan, we chemically synthesize our own version of that DNA, and we put it into a microbe of our choice, and then we ferment that microbe in big fermentation vats, kind of like how you would ferment yeast in vats to make beer, for example. Sure. Um, and then we extract out that protein, and then that's when we can process it into a fiber or into a protein plastic or film or gel or, or more. So gotcha. um, what we're doing here in Clinton is we have a partnership with ADM, 
um, and they have um, a they they have some equipment on their site already uh, that has a high amount of synergy with our fermentation process. Um, so we make use of some of the equipment that's there. We install some of our own new equipment, um, and essentially we do this fermentation process uh, here in Clinton. So at the end of that fermentation process, we ha we have. Uh, something that looks very similar to, uh, you know, a protein powder you would just go out and buy, you know, at the supermarket. Mm -hmm. It's uh, this white protein powder, but it's uh, the the purpose is not for supplementing your diet, right? <laughs> the purpose is uh, uh, to send that to um, another fiber processing facility where we would then spin that into a fiber. Um, yeah, so gotcha. that's that's basically what we do. Now this this is the first is this the first fiber location in the United States? Yes, that's correct. So we have our headquarters, which again is in the middle of nowhere in northern Japan. We uh, we spun out of that university campus there and bought the rice fields next door and just built a lab there. Um, and then in, more recently, in 20, 2017, 2018 or so, um, we did establish our first fermentation facility in Thailand. And then uh, next, uh, this will be, you know, much much larger scale than in Thailand. Uh, th this in, here in Clinton is our is our next scale up step. Yeah. So now, is it just a ferment, uh, fermenting location? I mean, is that what the the main objective of the Clinton location is going to be? Yes. So there's actually even when we say fermentation, there's kind of a two step process. So first of all, there's the fermentation in the vats, but then you're left, you know, the, the primary raw material for this fermentation is basically sugars. Um, and here in Clinton, obviously, that's going to be sugars that are coming from corn, sure. coming from the Clinton wet mill, right? Um, so at the end of fermentation, you're kind of left with this, what we call broth, that's just a mixture of all these nutrients that um, have not yet been eaten by the microbes, and then also a ton of our protein. Uh, but we just want the protein, right? So after the fermentation, there's this actual... Um, separation or you might call purification step where we remove out just those proteins and then dry them into that powder for shipping. Gotcha. And then the broth gets just disposed of? I mean, it's... Yeah, so also there, um, we are also going to be building a uh, wastewater treatment facility uh, right. next door across the street from the ADM facility. So um, whatever, so all that other stuff that is not our protein in the broth then goes out to that wastewater treatment facility. Gotcha. And the stuff's natural. I mean, it's what you're talking about is using natural things, so it's not... Yes. Uh, it should be a very environmentally friendly uh, yep. organization there, too, then. Yes, that's correct. And even our waste is, like I said, it's it's a bunch of nutrients, basically. Right. Um, so one, uh, one important project for us is going to be to... Uh, find the best way to reuse this uh, waste uh, material because sure. there's a lot of there's a lot of nutrients there's a lot of energy in there that could be used for something um, we just have to find the right application for that whether it be fertilizer or whether it be uh, animal feed or, right. or something else you know those are all things that we are considering right now mm -hmm. and that was that was going to be my question can we return it back to the agriculture side and then you're yeah. just a a cycle taking care pretty much of yourself. Yeah, that absolutely. Yeah. And we yeah. have some businesses around here that we should maybe tell, like AgriKing, which is just across the river in Illinois. They make like animal nutrition supplements and things like that. So, yeah. you know, always the possibility, we hope, and certainly that's where the CRDC comes in, is trying to facilitate business to business communication and trying to figure out, okay, if you have waste that's left over, but somebody else could use it, yeah, right. let's talk about who else could use it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. how do we how do we use it? That's, that's phenomenal. It's, this is mind-boggling as you're talking about it like somebody just saying the abcs i mean this is uh second nature we're trying to describe this to each other like <laughs> yeah. a couple of weeks back and we're like well i think it's this yeah and i think it's that well it's high tech and it's innovative that's we're right yeah. and they're coming to clinton so i'm not going to question it too much but yeah when you were when you told me i had 15 minutes today i was like oh geez how am i gonna, how am I gonna condense this down <laughs> condense it. <laughs> yeah we have like a minute conversation i get lost but uh no it, it's fantastic so coming to clinton is, is part of that uh, the reasoning is the relationship with ADM and, and what yeah. they are offering as far as uh, product and placement and their facilities? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, we met uh, ADM, uh, I think, back in 20, I think it was maybe summer of 2019. Um, and, you know, we had been on the lookout for facilities like the one here. 
uh, and we had we had traveled across several different countries, um, but there wasn't really a facility that was just right for us. You know, it was either wasn't high enough spec or it was like way higher than we needed. Um, and so really when we found ADM in 2019, um, it, was a, it was a big surprise to us to find a facility that, that was so well oriented to our process. And I should actually mention that um, it wasn't just ADM, but in 2019, um, also Governor Reynolds did come to Tokyo Mm -hmm. um, and myself and the CEO of, of Spiber Inc. in Japan uh, actually did meet her there, and that started a, um, a great communication line, which resulted in uh, kind of the, the incentive package, which sure. uh, we recently were, a, were very grateful to receive mm -hmm. from the state of Iowa and also from the city of Clinton. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, um, you're already here, but when can we uh, expect, is there a timeline of when things are going to be running full speed, and, and what can we look forward to? Yeah, so we're still in the um, engineering design phase of the project um, prior pre-construction, but it is our goal to actually break ground and begin construction later this year, um, and then construction will probably take um, you know somewhere around a year and a half, uh, maybe a little bit less. So, kind of beginning of 2023 is where we are targeting now for actually beginning uh, production on site. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's that's fantastic. It's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of uh, Iowa so far? You grew up on the West Coast. You got totally different weather, totally different environment, totally yeah. different rules out there. Yeah. You get to the Midwest from Japan. I mean, yeah. you got to be going. What am I doing? Yeah. Well, you know what? I I do have to say that <clears throat> as many differences as there probably are between the the culture of the West Coast and the Midwest and the East Coast. Uh, coming back to the States after 11 years in Japan has made me realize just how many things are, sh are shared <laughs> uh, nationally here in the U.S. Um, and it's the weirdest things. I, I come back and, and uh, it's like uh, I have these weird cravings like, oh, I need, I was telling Aaron about this the other day, I need grape nuts. Like, this is the American experience, you know. <laughs> and there's just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be back and, uh, and. It, it feels very much like a, a homecoming, I'd say. Good. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, um, how often do you travel back to Japan? I mean, you got to have pretty wide open uh, communication and travel plans with them, right? Yeah, well, you know, with the COVID situation, I, I have not been back yet. Oh, wow. Um, and I, I really, you know, there's a two-week quarantine in place right now if I want to go back to Japan, which kind of um, is pretty inconvenient. So at this point I don't have plans to go back but as things start to open up I think I'll definitely be sure. uh, coming back and forth pretty often. Yeah. So what do you miss most about the uh, Japanese culture that uh, when you came back? 11 years is a long time. Yeah, um, y you know uh, first thing that comes to mind is heated toilet seats. <laughs> <laughs> and why not that be the first thing to come yeah. to mind? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? <laughs> Man. That's like that 2.30 in the morning yeah, thing, yeah. you know? Wow. <laughs> Holy cow, what a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> There's the next offspring of Spiber. We're going to yeah. do American <laughs> toilet seats that are heated. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Uh, food? I mean, oh, for sure, yeah. Good. I mean, uh, yeah, I, of course, the sushi, especially up in, the, in northern Japan. Um, you know, northern northern Japan people are kind of sushi snobs, even uh, within Japan. So it's like Tokyo sushi. No, get out of here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so there's definitely, uh, I mean, the the fish in northern Japan really is is quite delicious. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, Daniel, we're excited to have you here. I appreciate you coming out and talking to us. I know you've got meetings you got to get to, and uh, you're traveling today. So I appreciate you taking time out to uh, come out and let us uh, be educated a little bit on Spiber and. Uh, Looking forward to it. I mean, I'm, I'm really excited to see what this holds for Clinton, and uh, I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's a huge addition, so we appreciate you guys finding our little town here along the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for the honor of, of being here today, and, and um, you know, we've only been here for a couple months, but, you know, the, the relationships that we're already building here in Clinton um, have been really amazing, and... Uh, happy to be here and, and looking forward to kind of the future relationship that uh, we will be growing together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. Aaron, thanks for bringing Daniel by. You are very welcome. Thank you, Daniel. And Chris, one last thing I'm going to mention. We're going to yep. have Debbie Durham, uh, Director of the Iowa Economic Development Authority and the Iowa Finance Authority, will be in Clinton next Tuesday, March okay. 16th, and we're going to have a little working lunch with her uh, with some business representatives, including Danny Meyer from Spiber. 
Um, Eric Bassnett from ABM will also be there. Nave, uh, Andrew Nave from Nave Family Beef, which right. we just announced recently. So while Debbie is in town, we're going to have a chance to have some of the business representatives give her an update on all the great things going on in Clinton. And most of them receive like state incentive packages. So they can talk about those things. And then we also have a few businesses we're going to have her meet with uh, prior to the lunch who are thinking about a business expansion here in Clinton. So, of course, I can't mention those names. But <laughs> you always do that to me. <laughs> but we have at least three businesses right now that we're talking to that are seriously considering a local expansion. And so while Director Jerome's in town, we're going to have them talk to her and, and you know talk about state incentive packages and what that looks like and time frame and everything else. So really looking forward to it. Still looking at a great 2021 and uh, thrilled that we had Spyware join us uh, in 2020. Obviously, that relationship is moving forward. And thanks again to ADM, who really is, you know, sort of the linchpin in bringing Spyware here. So always grateful for that. And thanks very much for the time this morning. Absolutely. And uh, Daniel, welcome. We do, Again, we appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. All right. Have a great day. Yep. You, you guys, too. Daniel Meyer from Spyber. Brand new here in Clinton. I'm excited. Wait till it gets going. 841, more music and more chances to win 947 bucks coming up. Stay tuned. <laughs> I like your stimulus package giveaway. That's right. Got it. <laughs>